What are you most proud of? The science of business. And a mystery. And great fun. Charisma. Innovation. Absolute passion. And risk taking. Knowledge is the powerful thing. A mammoth learning process. You walk with your talk in this company. It's very important to listen. Self confidence, teamwork, leadership. Those are the qualities you need today if you're going to get any group or organization to work for you. Fine words. But how do you acquire these things? Well, it might sound crazy, but one solution was to send 30 managers to sea for a week as trainee sailors in a schooner. Did they get what they were looking for? Yes, and a bit more too. It's been a very, very emotional experience, and I wouldn't have missed it for the world. What I've learned in this trip mm. is to um, try and break down the, the uh, barriers and actually speak to people a lot more naturally. Have you ever thought you want to get off? This has been an experience uh, unlike any other that I've ever you know, really been through. Quite interested in what you're doing. <laughs> That's what they said on the bounty. <laughs> Right, yeah. Hello, you're in my watch and Rachel. Right, you're yeah. in mizzen watch. Okay. Number two. I'll show you where your bike is. Bits of beer, isn't it? Yeah. Two bunkers. Is that for me? Sorry, Neil. Okay. Got any questions? Just come and ask me. Hello. 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 Once on board, the managers are split into three watches. A management development specialist is attached to each watch. Roger King is the man for Justin and Martin. Well, I think for me, well, personally, I mean, I want to get uh, to find out a bit more about myself, you know, what my sort of my own sort of characteristics are, what are my strengths or weaknesses. Roger's job is to see that everyone gets the most out of this experience. Well, I'm sort of feeling more anxious about. Um, having to talk about personal development, you know, and um, on a one-to-one -one basis, more so than actually um, climbing masts and going up the river. I can sort of find that uh, a bit nerve-wracking at times, especially when you're under the strain of a, a camera. Right. Um, You'll get used to that. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. Let go of the headroom! One thing I suggest is that you keep sharing. Don't if you run. bottle things up in your mind, you can get more and more confused. Clarity of thought, clarity of action will come if you share. I think the, you know, the feelings at the time of first arriving um, were what were brought out at the introduction, and that was uh, you know, the apprehension, anxiety. Yeah. At the end of the day, they talk to each other about what they've learned, because it's, it's difficult for the individual sometimes to know how they come across under stress. They're going to keep an eye on each other and they're going to give each other feedback. Are you married? There is nothing like climbing a rope ladder 60 feet into the air above a heaving sea to test your nerve. This is called confidence building. Right, 
Spooky and sad, but um, first time to, on the end of the yard, um, you lose a lot of the stability that you had, all the rigidness. So uh, I found it um, quite scary. <laughs> Confused? Of course. That's the trouble with change. New worlds always mean new language. Hard work and the swell of the sea take their toll. I don't think I want this to develop. Don't buy this brand. I'll get mad if they see it. Yeah, it's a bit with that. Does it? The wife would never believe me. The time now is half past four. It's been about uh, four hours since we were last called on close tacking stations to. Um, turn onto a port tag. Um, things are a little bit anxious at the moment because as you'll see the, uh, the thick fog and we're, we're sitting just outside the uh, French coast. One of the roughest watches to actually to do because it's that, that awful period right in the middle of the night you have to wake up and get up and perform. I slept quite well last night. Uh, I felt very rough just after going down uh, after our previous watch and I've been sort of trying to grade myself out of marks out of 100 and how I particularly feel my stomach and seasickness and performance generally and that was the lowest. I went down to about 50 last night and currently I'm about 90. Well surprisingly enough I'm, I'm quite awake at the moment um, considering the amount of sleep that I haven't had. I'm very pleased at the moment with the way the, uh, the management development approach is going. We're very motivated people so it's been very easy for them to assimilate a lot of the information. We wouldn't have expected young trainees to be as efficient as these people have become in such a short time. The ideal crew for these ships is somebody that wants to be on them. You know, that's, um, they don't necessarily have to have any idea about sailing whatsoever, but they need to be somebody that can actually take instructions and do exactly what you tell them. Uh, we, we actually need to operate like that. I think the sort of team spirit is it's definitely building and we realise that if we don't all pull together the thing just now won't actually happen. But they've got a good night at sea. They had probably six hours sleep, which is quite a bonus on the schooner. And they seem quite happy this morning. At the moment I think I feel as though I'd like to go away and sit down in the corner and have a good cry. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. 
and I didn't expect it to be quite so difficult. Um, not necessarily difficult, but just keeping going all the time. Um, but I'm sure I'll get over that. It's been a, a challenge the whole way. It's a matter of just pushing yourself until you can't go much further. Yeah. I think with the seasickness, um, you know, amongst the other people, it, it's put more pressure on those that haven't been so Going up the, uh, the top, that's been the, the highlight of my uh, of the trip so far for me. It's been, uh, you know, the actual spookiness of going up there and getting the adrenaline through you. And getting past your fear? Getting past my fear. Yeah. And what's yeah. on the other side of that fear for you? And that pain? Well, of... it's the confidence. Um, once you're through it, it's... Uh, you, you, within yourself, you're a lot more confident that next time you meet a challenge like that, you've got absolutely no problem with um, handling something. Right. Yeah. And do you think you'll empathise a bit more with other people when you put them through change? or a training course like this yeah. or whatever. That's right. Do you feel a bigger person having gone through the last two days? And what I mean by that is you know more something about yourself. You said it to me at one point that you wanted to have a good cry. How would you put that? I mean, it's, it's OK to cry? Yeah. But can you do that at work? Yeah. You can? Yeah. No, I go out and stomp down the car park, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it makes you human. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly not looking forward to going out to the, the mask, but I no doubt if I'm pointed to and told to go and do it, I'll do my best. And, uh, you know, I'll overcome the fear and the belief and hope that the person that's standing next to me is feeling exactly the same thing. There is a, a concept that says, well, an idea, that the more you can keep your agreements with yourself, you'll gradually keep more agreements with other people, and you grow. Amazingly, after only two days, there's already one group, one big team. That's what shared adversity can do for you. Run, Cliff, and lay below! Come down! That evening, they all went out together as one huge group, but not just to enjoy themselves, as we were to discover the following morning. Once a group has got its own identity, the group wants to do its own thing. But how will those in charge react? And what is the thing they want to do? Uh, what do people want to do? Do they want to go shopping, if you like, or do they want to actually get involved in a little bit more sailing? They're getting confused between deciding on preferences and objectives. The objectives can't change. The objective is to be in Southampton at 7 a.m. or whatever it is on Friday morning. In a certain conflict with the aims of the ship's uh, procedures and the idea of the management development course itself and we want the biggest say from like what's going to happen next but they want time to discuss it amongst themselves they're discussing it now they're they? yes. getting into all the typical holes that anybody gets into in a consultation <laughs> process yeah. I mean, it might be helpful if the one that has the most selling experience might be the one that also gets involved with navigator at least that way we, we, it, it yeah. would sound credible yeah. and we won't get lost Right. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. The reasons why I think we should go well, this way. Yeah, ah. but then you're taking it back to going back to it being yes, the okay. sailing again. Well, no, because the person we also appoint must have that ability, must be also be able to put forward what we've been talking about this morning here now. We'll delay sailing until 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. And I'll tell the harbour authorities that. And we'll have the berth until 11. OK, person. That's what we're doing. They have all the information required. We all, we all think that they've kept the information too much themselves, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We've not been sharing enough of, it, of information, has it? Have we had any feedback from the permanent crew yet as to these sort of views or feelings? 
Well, it's an interesting development that they've obviously worked it out themselves last night, and they want to make a, take a positive role in the decision making that's going ahead at the moment. And I think it's, it's very refreshing, very good. Yeah. Looking at destinations, then, where, where do we actually think we should go for? When do we get uh, what's the consensus of opinion? I mean, how, how about the, the, the Cherbourg option, Cherbourg and then Southampton? Why are we going to Cherbourg apart from going shopping? Is that the, is that Lord, no, that the reason the, is, is, is again to get, to get to get some interest, yeah, which is not what we're here to see, to see, the, to see land again, more terra firma, <laughs> <laughs> which can't be a bad thing, David. And that and in that respect, then we're going to get more time to to actually uh, think but rationally but going into without Sherbrooke, being disturbed. We get, we get more chance to talk like yeah, this. Yes, precisely. Whereas we got we... more chance to speak last night by going into Fine. dock it's here. Not doing it for the right reasons. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yes, yes. Yeah. 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 definitely. When well, do you think that they've only been on board now? What's the three days? Um, and they're, they're wanting to take a, such a positive role in the running of the vessel, as long as they don't actually tell me how to run the vessel. We're not suggesting mutiny <laughs> or, or, or to tell the captain what to do, but I think we want to, to actually decide, help decide what we do next. I think it's very positive, very refreshing. It's certainly not something that's never happened to me in the schooners before, I can tell you. But that's um, because we haven't had people who are used to taking charge and to whom charge taking charge appears to come reasonably naturally. Time constraints and the feeling of the other groups as well meant that people wanted an overnight stop. Two reasons, shopping and sleep. We looked at the charts, we looked at the tides, we have to go back and show the captain now and make sure he doesn't veto it on us. Now where do you want to go to Sherbrooke this evening? Because uh, basically all our watches voted that they wanted a break, they wanted to keep their body clocks, normal, have a good night's sleep, and then have the option of getting some duty-free goods. <laughs> so that was that was the really point of view. Now, if we get there at 2100, what is actually going to be the time ashore there? 2200 hours in French time. I see. And you're not interested in going ashore tonight? Well, no. No. If we can get there all, any faster, it would be nice. But if we can't, then we at least get a good night's sleep, get the old body clock back in order again, get some. Uh, some, some recharge of the batteries and we'll be in good thinking mind for... Do you, do you not think your batteries were recharged last night? Yes, and that's why we're so active and, and, and on the ball this morning, because of that. Yes. Absolutely, but they liked it so much last night, they want to recharge again for tonight. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to get underway again at something like three o'clock in the morning, half past three. Now, do you really want to do that? Not particularly. No. Because an awful lot of you are getting out of bed for that, so there's not going to be very much sleep. Mm. There's going to be captain. even less sleep for the captain, actually. Yes. And in my opinion, that's a very serious consideration as well, because I'm just like the rest of you. Um, we've all got to have our sleep <laughs> as well. And my navigator, who's standing over there, chuckling away, he's got to get his sleep in as well. As a matter of interest, what, what do the management developers have to say to me? Yes, I see that uh, what's happened this morning is that <clears throat> two types of management structure are really beginning to talk to each other. Mm. And I've asked my watch to have a look at what effects it has on the permanent crew, mm -hmm. what it has on you. Mm -hmm. And we are now going to have to all learn to manage change. I'm a bit surprised, actually, in many ways, um, that they come up with this option of wanting to go into port again. Um, especially for an overnight visit. I could have understood it if they wanted for a short period of time. Uh, that rather seems to be, in a way, to smack of wanting to remove the difficult element out of the course, which is the element of being at sea under perhaps slightly difficult circumstances of being rolled around and being seasick and having to handle sails. Although, of course, by going in, they will have to handle more sails. Well, I'm trying to get the body clocks onto the normal pattern, mm. because um, one of the whole objects of these trips is, in fact, to disturb that system. Yes. Um, and they're resisting that. Yes, they are. I think, the navigator that, that's right. I think they are actually trying to take the easiest option. Say, it's very interesting how they yeah. to get across. to the needles on on Friday morning the easiest yeah. route. Yeah, that that's what's trying. Yeah. Every time I mentioned during the briefing a sail route, in other words, out the start point or come in and stay sailing, it was definitely well we like Sherbrooke. I think that's how we done. They've schemed out the easiest option for them to get the maximum amount of time in their bunks, and I think they've done that's it very right. well. Yeah. I think it's what you watch almost term a mutiny because it's a discussion amongst more than one, isn't it? But they're all um, together. But they're all together on it. They've chosen the route. They've got a lot of power. Now they want to choose their own leaders. Are they wise? Also involve ourselves as team leaders. I would suggest that by Andrew. 
Would you I feel, would you, would you feel confident? Well, I mean, that is an interesting development, but mm. they've asked to do that. And shows that they are, as we said earlier, natural managers and wanting to take charge. Two, six, hey! I think there's lots of factors as well they haven't appreciated, and they're going to get a, quite a few shocks. Why have we got four watch on this sale? Well, they're supposed to be setting the four gaff and waiting for the four gaff. For reason of safety that we're trying to always sell it first. Well, it should operate quite happily with the, the head stills going up and the, and the gaffs at the same time. We've had problems on the fore deck. Yeah. Right. It's not very much room. Right, there, there. No, there's no problem whatsoever. We normally operate in teams. I allocate jobs. I allocated the job of setting the inner jib to the to the mizzen watch, and I expect I watch to be able to cope with that task. And then I want the fore watch to set the fore gap. Not go and join the other watch on another sail. You can't operate like that, my friend. Okay. Right. Okay. That's quite right. Mizzen watch up for it. Two six. Heave. Two six, heave! Two six! You're in dire danger of breaking that saddle on that gap. Because you've got your throat sweating up, so you haven't picked up where you've been. Two six! Yeah, like that. But you can only do it in two stages. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, that's going to break the saddle if I don't care. about managing a situation where you've got no experience of the thing and I think this afternoon showed that experience really does count and we spent 40 minutes putting up a sail that had had I taken the decision to go and speak to the helmsman we could have perhaps put up in uh, a minute by just asking him to alter course marginally to take all the strain off the sail so uh, experience counts um, and also not knowing your way around definitely causes a lot of hard hardship not only for you but for the people that you're managing and um, pick that up very strongly this afternoon the next day they discussed the mutiny what had they learnt so let's do it open to you it was the right decision it was our decision i think we made it as a group as a team and worked together what is it that you learned from that if you've got a no part in the decision you've got far more commitment for that when you've chosen your own leaders when you're choosing where you're going to go you've got massive commitment to that and the team starts to pull together and you start instead of going for conflict you start to sort of back off a bit accept things yes doing your own thing is great for commitment but make sure you have the know-how and the right objectives <laughs> So they go back home. After a week, they won't forget. But will they remember the most important thing of all? The reason why they mutinied. When change is forced upon us, we rebel. But if we help to shape those changes, then we'll own the new regime. And what we own, we value. <laughs> As long as they don't actually tell me how to run the first time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>